All right, we are back with my friend. It's been a while since he's been on the podcast. I'm so excited to have him here to do this uh, because he's perfect for it. Burger McFarland, welcome back to the show. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Mina. You know the premise and how what we're doing here is we're doing yeah. the full first round. I am going to give you two options. It's called War Room because we're like working together. So yeah. we're kind of like the head coach and the GM. I'm going to give you two options. I'm going to put them up on a board for those who are watching on youtube.com slash at Mina guys. Uh, and then you're going to choose. So, and the, what we're doing here, just to remind people, this is what Booger would do. It's not what we think is going to happen. We're not reporters trying to mock out the draft or project. You can go read Mel Kuyper for that. We are doing what we would do or what you would do, uh, what I would do and then what you would do. So uh, you have all the power. Are you ready to start drafting? I am ready. And since I am going to be on the desk night one with Mel Kuyper and Louis Riddick, you may see some real live facial expressions that you're going to see in about two weeks. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, yeah. Are you just before we get started? How excited are you? I feel like you you do the draft always. This feels to me like a more exciting and unpredictable first round than recent years. Do you agree? I completely agree. I, I think there's so much intrigue at the top with the quarterbacks. Uh, you know, of course, our friend Dan Olaski thinks every quarterback is going to be great, but that has proven not to be the case. <laughs> and so, therefore, I can't wait to see who drafts J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr. I mean, there could be four, five, six quarterbacks going the first round. It could be four in the top four picks. And so I think there's so much intrigue there. We've all labeled Marvin Harrison Jr., this generational prospect. He might not even be the first receiver taken. So there's some intrigue there. Like if you just think about so much that, that could happen, yeah. I think it's a draft where we really don't know. Whereas in years past, you kind of knew what was going to take place. This one, we really don't. Totally agree, especially with so many teams that could trade up and so many teams that could trade down. So a lot of a lot of options. We're going to tell you what we would do, starting with pick one. I am You're the Chicago Bears. You're Ryan Poles. Mm -hmm. And I am giving you the choice of Caleb Williams, who many believe is written in stone as the Bears' actual choice, or uh, Jaden Daniels from, of course, your alma mater. I'm going to take Caleb Williams. And, and this is no disrespect to Jaden Daniels. I'm taking Caleb Williams just because I think at his, at his ceiling, he's just a little bit better. If you go back to 2022 and the tape, Jaden Daniels' 23 tape is so, so much better than anybody else's. It's unreal. But I think if you told me both of these players were going to reach their maximum, Pete Williams' ceiling is just a little bit higher based on some of the things we've seen him do uh, off-platform and the improvisation type stuff. There you go. Not biased. Booger taking Caleb. I like it. I, I, I actually didn't know what direction you were going to go in there. So I, I am going to leave Jaden Daniels on the board for pick two for the Washington Commanders. We are introducing Drake May. I think this is going to be the biggest question of the entire draft at the moment. Totally unclear. In fact, you're seeing betting markets all over the place. What would you do if you were the Washington Commanders? I would take Jaden Daniels. I, I think Drake May is more of a project. He's unfinished. Uh, there is a lot to be concerned with his footwork, some of the decisions that he makes in the pocket. And Jaden Daniels, he, his arrow is pointing up, Mina. I, I go back to the 2022 season when they opened against Florida State, and I had no idea what to expect. And I was kind of like, eh, I don't really know about this guy. And now you look at him, he's a Heisman Trophy winner. He, he had arguably one of the better seasons we've seen a quarterback have in, in the history of college football. And I just think that his arrow is, is pointing so high. And to put the cherry on top of the cake, Who's the offensive coordinator in Washington? Kind of fits perfectly with Jay Daniels, doesn't it? Can I ask you, do you feel like it's a good fit? Because um, I've made listeners of this podcast know that I've been pretty critical of Cliff Kingsbury over yeah. the years, particularly in Arizona. I didn't love some of the, the the things he did on offense there. Do you feel like the from the coaching perspective and given sort of the questions on that offensive line, that's a good landing spot for Daniels? Well, I, I think it's a good landing spot based on the, 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 the offensive concept and what they want to do. Now, is the offensive line ready to win? No. Uh, do they have enough playmakers? No. Is the defense? Like, there are a lot of things that they got to fix. But if you just look at the concept of what Mike Denbrock, who was the offensive coordinator at LSU, tried to present for Jaden, which was options in space. I think Cliff yeah. Kingsbury can present those same things for him, which are options in space and kind of move – Make the field more open. I think that's where he's going to succeed. Now, does he have to get better in some things? Sure, all these guys got to get better. But I, but I do think if you look at, at its core, what Cliff wants to do, he wants to create space, play with tempo, and allow his quarterback to be a playmaker. I think that fits Jaden well. well. That is certainly true about Jaden. All right, so pick three, the New England Patriots. We are leaving Drake May on the board, 
And this is their first trade option. Uh, the Vikings have picked up the phone and <laughs> they are offering you uh, pick 11 and 23 in this year's draft, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, and then a uh, future first and like a second and a third, I don't know, whatever. Basically the typical package to move up this far. Do you take it? I am uh, taking this trade. I'm going to take that. You are? Yes, I am. I am the Vikings. I am coming up and I'm going to select Drake May because from what I understand, KOC, Kevin O'Connell loves Drake May. The size, uh, he's, he's kind of like a piece of clay that is starting to be formed, but he, he's not fully formed yet. And so it sounds like Minnesota is really intrigued by the ability uh, of their young, innovative play caller to be able to mold a quarterback. And maybe, just maybe, they can sell that to J.J., Justin Jefferson, and get him signed to a long-term deal. If I'm Drake May, I'm pretty happy about that because that's certainly <laughs> the better landing spot, right, than landing with uh, New England. All right. So uh, pick four is uh, up next as the Arizona Cardinals. And I was going to do a trade, but I'm actually, you, you said something earlier that maybe piqued my interest a little bit um, because it sounds like you might have a take here that's different from some of the, the uh, other guests we've had. So the Arizona Cardinals, I was going to do a trade, but we're not going to do the trade. Uh, you're picking between two wide receivers instead. You're sticking, you're taking a player. Uh, you feel good about the fact that you have that extra first later. You've got an extra third. So you're like, not, we don't need to keep rebuilding with draft picks. Yeah. Do you take Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors? Uh, I'm going to go with the most explosive player, I think, in the draft. That's Malik Neighbors. And I know there's going to be some temptation for Arizona to get the Larry Fitzgerald clone, so to speak, in Marvin Harrison Jr., even though I think uh, MHJ is just a little bit faster, more explosive. Let's face it, the most explosive guy in this draft is Malik Neighbors. I call him Jamar Chase Light. They kind of look the same. They're six foot, 200 pounds. They're built like running backs down below. They can break tackles. They're explosive. And I think if you're Arizona, you need just a little bit more explosiveness. I'm going with Neighbors. Uh, well, that makes an interesting decision up next for the Los Angeles Chargers because New GM, Joe Ortiz, he didn't think Harrison Jr. would be on the board. And now he's, his mind is blown. He's like, oh, my God, I, I, we need a wide receiver. Harrison Jr. is there. However, the phone is ringing again, Booger. Mm. It's the Denver Broncos. Oh. <laughs> Sean Payton loves J.J. McCarthy. Oh, so he I've is heard. on the phone, and he is offering you pick 12 mm -hmm. and a future first and – uh, their second this year. Uh, would that be enough to go from 12 to five? I feel like it would. Maybe yeah, you'd have to throw in a little bit more. But yeah, literally, it's less than the previous package, but still yeah. still pretty good. And also, crucially, five to 12, if you're the Chargers, think about the needs, where you might be able to get there. That's not that far. It's not that far Would you at take all? this trade? Yes. I'm but it's Marvin Harrison Jr. I am taking that trade because if you're the Chargers, didn't you just get rid of a $20 million receiver and, and a possession guy in Keenan Allen? Like, I want to become more explosive. You drafted a receiver last year, uh, Quentin Johnston. Yes, he needs to take the next step, but he has talent. I'm taking the trade. I'm moving down, and I'll let you know what I'm going to do. But hint, hint, I want to build a physical football team for the Chargers, so I don't think I'm taking wide receiver in the first round. That's part of the reason why I like the trade is um, because of the hint you dropped and the position I think you're going to target there. It's such a deep position in this yes. draft. I think yes. you could get a really talented what you're going to take probably there. Okay, uh, so I'm the Giants at six. And, you know, maybe I wanted JJ. He's not there, so maybe I'm bummed. But, oh, my God, Marvin Harrison Jr. is still available to us. Uh, no one is on the phone. Nobody is trading up at this point. But I am going to throw maybe a bit of a curveball for you because I also thought this player might be gone and he's free. It's Joe Alt. So everybody assumes the Giants are going to go receiver. Yes. However, this is a very, very flawed offensive line outside of Andrew Thomas. Now they did sign a bunch of players. You still have Evan Neal. Maybe you're hoping that – uh, he can work out. You sign, I think, Jermaine Illuminar to play right tackle. Would you go receiver or would you take the offensive lineman? And once I see that Marvin Harrison Jr. is on the board, I'm not even looking at the second name. I'm going to take him, put him in New York. <laughs> and regardless of what I think about Daniel Jones, I'm going to put my my wide receiver room toward the upper echelon by adding. Uh, I, I think when he comes into the league, he's going to be a top 15 receiver automatically. 
uh, just because of what he's going to provide, the consistency. And so I'm going to add him, and I'm going to give Daniel Jones a weapon in what might be his last year in New York. Although Joe Alt, Joe Alt is very tempting, you know, but still. And and here's another little 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 kind of piece of intrigue. I don't know if Joe Alt's going to be the first tackle taken. I don't. Well, Booger, you have that decision to make right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's pick seven. I think maybe the worst kept secret in the NFL is that the, the Titans are obviously going to take now, but this was the one where it's like written in chalk, right? Or yes. Chalk, uh, yeah. Ink. It, yes. I would be stunned if the Tennessee Titans, especially after obviously signing Calvin Ridley. Um, yeah. So I don't know who the other tackle you're thinking of is. I am going to put up Fuaga out of uh, Oregon State. Is yes. that the guy you were thinking of as the Joe Alt alternative? Well, uh, given this option, I'm going to take Joe Alt. Okay, okay, as far as as far oh, as the exercise, him. you're thinking of someone no. else. I think that. Well, there is a lot of love in the league for Fatano from Washington, just because yeah. I, I the mean the versatility. Like he's a he's an athlete. Very rarely do you look at an offensive tackle and say he's an athlete. Now he's not Joe Thomas because Joe Thomas was unbelievable, but Fatano, I mean, he gives you so much flexibility. Right tackle, I think he can play left. He can play guard. He is an explosive athlete, and I think. There are some around the league that like him and think he's the best lineman in the draft. Even though you look at the traits and the measurables, you know, Joe Alt is just too, too, too much to pass up with the length, the frame, uh, how nimble he is. I mean, he ran five flat at 6'8 and 320. Like, that's unbelievable athleticism for a guy his size. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to – I have a potentially spicy – I want to do another trade. Um, oh. This is going to be – this one might be a little bit – crazy but hear me out i like spicy okay. especially on some wings <laughs> okay so you're the atlanta falcons you're yes. pick eight everybody thinks you're gonna take a pass rusher you yes. have a gaping hole on the defensive line many several gaping holes you have not had a pass rusher since john abraham frankly like it has yes. been a minute however maybe turner feels a little rich there maybe you think you can go down and get one and on the phone, it's Trent Balky from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm. And he is calling you and he wants Roma Dunze and he'll do whatever it takes to get Roma Dunze. And he thinks he has to jump the Bears and the Jets correctly. Yes. So he's offering you uh, the 17th pick and a future first, which is rich. So if you're Atlanta, you could potentially fall to 17. Maybe there's another pass rusher there, but maybe Dallas Turner is gone. He has gone eight in every single mock draft I have done. Do you take the trade or do you and see if it falls to you or do you stick and take Turner? Mm. See, to, me, <laughs> to me, it depends on how you feel about a guy like Chop Robinson. Because I think when you look at Dallas Turner, Dallas Turner is, if Dallas Turner is, is kind of the mold, the most explosive rusher, Chop, Chop Robinson has that same type of, of explosiveness. He's just a little bit uh, unrefined. And so if you're Atlanta and I gave you Chop Robinson, would you feel pretty good? Yeah, but you wouldn't feel as good as Dallas Turner. Um, yeah, I think there's a reason everybody sees it. It's a gaping hole. I'm taking Dallas Turner. Wow. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to take oh Dallas Turner. Oh, my God. All right. Let me take him off my board. Do you, let me ask you a question, and you don't have to answer who you think it is. If not, do you think Dallas Turner is the best defensive player in this class? Yes, I, I think the only other person I would even entertain would, would be the corner from uh, Toledo, uh, Quinion Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think he's right, a, well, he, had, he has star written all over him. He will be there soon, but he will not be the pick at nine. Chicago Bears giving you two, I think, very interesting options. Odunze back on the board. Yes, you have Keenan Allen, but Keenan Allen, more of just the uh, stopgap solution for you potentially. Mm -hmm. And I am putting up an offensive lineman. Mm. I don't, I still don't know who the offensive lineman that you were saying might go for Alt is. So I'm going to take a shot here. I'm throwing up a Marius Mims out of Georgia. And uh, the Bears, you know, they, they have. Obviously, the right tackle and Darnell Wright. Braxton Jones been okay for them, but potential here to maybe get the left tackle of the future to pair with Caleb Williams, or do you stick and take a Dunze? Uh, Mims is the most intriguing prospect in the draft because 
Uh, the measurables yeah. are crazy. The tra traits are there. He's only got eight starts. Um, and he stays hurt. Like, he got hurt to combine. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so am I going to pass up on a Dunze to get a guy that has a ton of traits? And I, I might see him. I might not. I can't pass on that. I'm going to take Roma Dunze. I'm going to give Caleb Williams a guy who you don't always have to be pinpoint accurate. You can throw it up. He's the, he's the master of the 50-50 catch balls. And so uh, Adunze and Caleb Williams in Chicago, and I think everybody will pat Ryan Poles on the back if he gets those two. Yeah, I, I think Bears fans will be pretty stoked if that's the yeah. way this goes. The Jets are bummed because they wanted Adunze, but I mean, give you another pass catching option or an offensive lineman. Uh, who's the guy that you mentioned uh, from, of course, my beloved Washington Huskies? Yes. We have uh, Troy... Uh, fa fa can never say his name right. Fatanu, Fatanu, yes. uh, and then uh, Brock Bowers. This is the first Brock Bowers spot. It, it, Brock Bowers to me is the uh, biggest debate of the entire draft. Is where Brock Bowers will go because, as you know, positional value factors yeah. into it. Hmm. Uh, but you're the Jets. You're, you want to win now, and Aaron Rodgers is screaming in your ear saying, "Get me another pass catcher." Do you go him or do you go Troy? I'm going Fatanu and. As intriguing as Sorry, Bowers no. is, um, I just don't know if if you can take a tight end without saying, okay, I'm going to build my entire offense around him. Like, if you told me your offense was going to be Kansas City and Travis Kelsey, sure. But remember what we said about Kyle Pitts. Man, he's going to revolutionize the game. And I get it. They didn't have a quarterback. I get it. But Kyle Pitts, to this point, hasn't changed much in Atlanta. Now, that may change this year with Kirk Cousins because he has a more than adequate quarterback. But so far, I think the Kyle Pitts pick, where he was picked, is going to affect where Brock Bowers goes this year. Maybe it shouldn't, but I do mm -hmm. think it's going to be at the back of a lot of people's minds. So, uh, as you remember, the New England Patriots traded down. Mm -hmm. The Vikings traded up. So the Patriots are up now at pick 11. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that part of the reason why they might actually do this is because at pick 11, there will still be some very, very talented offensive linemen mm -hmm. available to them, which is, of course, a massive need. Uh, I'm putting Mims back up on my board, and I'm adding Olu Fashanu out of Penn State uh, to because I don't know what you think of him. So uh, you have your choice between these two players. I, I, I love Olu Fashanu. Uh, again, I think this is a little early for Mims because of the unknown. Um, Fashanu, his his star was probably a little brighter last year. But, I mean, it, it, it's, it's too much to pass up with his ability to mirror and stay in front of guys, the athleticism. You'd like him to be a little bit more physical. Sure. I'm sure every offensive line coach says that. But I, as far as the skills, the arm length, like those things are there. I can put him at left tackle. And for the first time, the Patriots would have an athletic, kind of slender looking left tackle. When you think about some of the guys they've had at that position, um, they've had massive guys in size. And Isaiah Wynn, who was Trent kind of a Brown, shorter guy, yeah. this guy is, a, is, is what you want to, your left tackle to look like. All right. So uh, speaking of tackles, as you recall, you traded down the Chargers mm -hmm. to pick 12. The Broncos traded mm -hmm. up to get J.J. McCarthy. And you traded down in part because you thought one of those these tackles might be available. So I am putting up. So you have your left tackle, Rashawn Slater, but you need a right tackle. So I am putting up a right tackle. Fuaga is back on the board. And then I'm throwing a little bit of a curveball. You desperately need corners. You desperately oh. need a lot of things. You're the Chargers. Yes. You have your roster. And uh, we're putting up Quinion Mitchell. Uh, for new defensive coordinator Jesse Minter's defense, which has a lot of holes. Are you going to go tackle or corner for the Chargers? Uh, I'm going for Aga. <laughs> Just because, really? like, again, yeah. even though I, I think Mitchell is at worst the second best defensive player in this draft, I just know who the head coach is. I know how he wants to play. I know they want to be physical. Uh, he said – in one of his opening press conferences, I'm not going to ask the quarterback to do everything. That means I got to get the offensive line up to up to par. And this is nothing against Trey Pipkins. I think he's been more than an, an adequate right tackle. Fuaga is nasty. Like just imagine Lenny yeah. with like an attitude. That's what Fuaga is. Like he's he's nasty like that. It should be noted, by the way, we have taken a f ton of tackles so far no which question. might be how this draft goes booger i mean oh my god the tackles in this draft are really something i think there's there's at least six going in the first round at least six Ooh, crazy okay so i i kind of think i know what you're gonna do here because well mm, mm, i mean i think 
Yeah, I I, I kind of think I know what you're going to do here because you kind of already revealed as much. But I'm going to put two corners up for the Raiders. Uh, corner is probably the biggest area of need on that. On a defense that's ascending and added Christian Wilkins and under Antonio Pierce last year played a lot better, but they still need help in the secondary. Are you going to take Quinion Mitchell or Terry and Arnold out of Alabama? I don't think there's much separating these two players. I mean, Quinion Mitchell has done everything right since the season was over. He, he knocked the senior bowl out of the park. He knocked the combine out of the park. Terry on Arnold, his tape speaks for herself. When in doubt, when players are equal, take the faster guy. Uh, Terry on Arnold is a 4-5 old guy. Quinion Mitchell's 4-3-3. I like Lamborghinis, but I do uh, my Maserati, so I'm going to take the Lamborghini. Okay. I hear – yeah, I'm doing uh, listeners uh, defensive players next week with Deontay Lee, so we will jump into the corners, who are a fun and interesting group. Uh, the Saints do not really need a corner. Um Okay, I'm going to – this mm, – it's a little rich for him, but – sorry, I'm just choosing uh, – actually, wait, no, 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 no. I got it. I got to go tackle both – it's crazy. We are truly <laughs> breaking the record on this pot. But they just you, – you, I'm sure you saw the news about Ryan Ranchek, um and his injury, which is devastating for them. Uh, and there's still some really, really good – I was tempted to put up one of the edge rushers here, but – uh, I'm going to go with, because that is an area of need for them. Obviously, yeah. uh, Young's on a one-year deal. Cam Jordan's great, but he's getting up in years. I'm going tackle. So um, I'm putting Mims back up, but I'm this time adding uh, J.C. Latham out of uh, Alabama. Who would you take? Those two products, I, I think Mims and the upside is there, but I think Latham, I, I got to take him. Like He's built like a brick house. Biggest legs I've ever seen. And little fun fact, he's actually in Tampa training, so I got a chance to spend some time with him. Uh, super nice kid. Thinks he can play left tackle. I told him he's crazy. Stick the right tackle. Uh, but I, I think if he's on the board when the Saints pick, it will be the, the quickest pick maybe in the draft because they will they will be tickle pink that he's still there. All right. The Colts. Uh, a lot of people have been going corner for the Colts. Terry yes. and Arnold still on the board is very tempting. I am going in a different direction. I'm going offense. I want to help my young quarterback out, Anthony Richardson. And I want to hear what you would decide here because i think this is a truly fascinating debate uh that brings up questions about what's best for the quarterback positional value etc so brock bowers is back on the board but so is brian thomas jr out of lsu the the big downfield threat richardson's got a big arm but bowers very you know is incredible prospect who would you go with uh, i think this is where brock bowers comes off the board uh, because to your All point right. uh bowers I, I i think can give your quarterback, somebody over the middle of the field. He doesn't always have to look deep. He can he can focus on the middle of the field. And he's not just a tight end. Like, I think Brock Bowers, everybody thinks, and, and I'm in agreement, that he can be a weapon. And so we can throw him little slip screens. We can we can, we can can put him in and bring him out of the backfield. He does, we can line him up as the X receiver on one side and see if he can win. And so uh, I, I'm going to be intrigued by where he goes. I think top 10 is too high. I look for Bowers to go somewhere between 15 and 20, and everybody's going to say, hey, Brock Bowers is dropping. He's dropping. Nah, I just think that's where he's going to fit because of the quarterbacks and the tackles. This is a good draft for the Seahawks because there's still a lot of really good players at needs that they have on the defensive and offensive lines. I'm going to get go two defensive players here, even though I do think this is a possible destination for interior offensive linemen like Graham Barton out of Duke, Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh, we're going defense. This is the first time we're seeing both of these players, Byron Murphy Jr., the defensive tackle out of Texas, or Lautu Latu out of UCLA, both areas that the Seahawks could target. I'm going to go with Latu. I know the injury history, but being there in Seattle, uh, I know he was medically, quote unquote, retired there at, at UW. Um, yeah. You know, one team's trash might be another team's treasure. And I, I think his ability to go down to UCLA and flourish. Let's just face it, though. If the injury concern wasn't there he'd be a top five to seven pick because he's the most skilled rusher and, and what does that mean because you hear a lot of people say he's the most skilled rusher here's what that means that means when he comes out of his stance he has a rush plan and he knows what his go-to moves are and he's worked them and he's not perfected them but they're highly functional moves so that's what skill means when it comes to a pass rush because you're going to hear everybody say man he's the most skilled guy but what does that actually mean? So he's got moves because the biggest knock I have on defensive linemen when they come into this draft is they're, they're all athletes, but they're not rushers. And there's a difference. This guy has a rush plan. He understands, hey, in the A block, we're doing this. In the B block, we're doing this. 
okay, if he does that, then you know what? I may have to move what's in the C's up into the B. Like, he has a plan for what's going on, and I love that about it. Can I ask you, since this is your expertise, obviously, um, do you feel like things might swing back towards valuing pass rush production over traits because that is like with Latu versus like a Turner, that's kind of the debate, right? Like Latu, I mean, he's a plenty athletic, yeah. but he's not, you know, dominant, explosive physical traits. Um, but you look in recent years, guys like obviously Trevon Walker, you know, didn't kind of pan out the way maybe Jacksonville, he's still a young player, but it, it, I wonder if teams will look at the last few years and say, Hey, maybe we should take the guy who already has the pass rush moves, the bag of moves that like Latu does. Well, when you talk about that draft, there's no question that Hutchinson was very similar uh, from a pass rush playing standpoint. He, his skill development was, was at a high level and Trayvon Walker was the better athlete. Now, having talked to Jacksonville, they wanted the athlete because of their defense. That's their decision. I knew that going in. Uh, that's why they took him. As far as these two guys here, I think you take Dallas Turner uh, that early in the draft because of the athleticism, because there is some production there, although it may not be as defined as Latu, and the health concern is not there with, with Dallas Turner. Yeah. So those things really aren't equal. I, I think from a from a risk mitigation standpoint, getting Latu middle of the first round, you can kind of justify it if he were to kind of have another medical issue with the neck. Yeah. It's interesting. It's an interesting debate, right? Always with these pass rushers. Okay. Well, speaking of the Jags, they're up. And as you remember, they tried to trade up for Odunze. They were rebuffed by you. Uh, rebuffed. But I love it. <laughs> Thomas Jr. is still on the board, and uh, they could use speed and size for Trevor Lawrence. Um, however, cornerback is also a need, and Terry and Arnold is available. Two uh, very good players. Who are you going to take? Wow. Um, as much as I love Arnold, I, I think this is a year where you, you got to – like we've been waiting for Trevor Lawrence to take that next step, right? Like he's got to continue yeah. c- continue producing and ascending to a high level. Calvin Ridley's gone. Christian Kirk was injured. Um, I got to get him another weapon. I'm going to bring Brian Thomas Jr. in there. Uh, 17 touchdowns. What did, he, what did he average? 17 yards a catch. Uh, productive player. Quiet. Uh, leader, you're not going to have any issues with him. And I think this is an opportunity for Trevor to take the next step and mold a young receiver how he wants him. If you think about Trevor, Trevor has always been giving guys. This is the first time he can actually help shape and mold a young guy. So I, I, I would I, I would take Brian Thomas Jr. here. Well, I'm going to put these two players because I actually just want to hear. I, well, I think they're both definitely the types of players that Cincinnati would consider 18. And mm-hmm. I also kind of want to hear how you compare them. Uh, Murphy Jr. is back on the board. Uh, DJ Reader is no longer on the Bengals. Um, and Johnny Newton suddenly has entered the chat. So he would be the other defensive tackle uh, that, that I would put in that tier. Who would you take if you were the Cincinnati Bengals? I'm going to take the more physical player, and that's Byron Murphy Jr. Uh, Johnny Newton, Jerzon, Johnny, whichever one you want to call him. A little bit, I think, I think he's quicker, a little bit more twitchy, uh, maybe can get upfield, create a little bit more pass rush, has a tendency to run around some blocks a little bit. I'm going with the physical guy. Both of them are really good. I just love Murphy's ability to get vertical. And if you think about, you know, everybody's going to say, and, and it just kills me when I hear this, Mina, yeah, he's a little small. Well, how big do you want him? He's 295 pounds. Like, what do you want him, 350? Like, he's 295. He's perfect size. Just because the guy's not 6'5", doesn't mean he's small. If you think about some of the best defensive tackles that I've ever seen, Aaron Donald, 6'1", 285. Uh, Warren Sapp, 6'2", 285. Um, John Randall, 6'1", 290. Guys that are playing now, Grady Jarrett, who's one of the top five. I was just about to Google Grady Jarrett's. I literally had typed out Grady Jarrett's size. I was like, how big is he? He's like 6'1", 285. So, like, that's to me, that's the perfect size. Uh, Long-winded way of saying I take Murphy and I feel good about it. Well, you mentioned Aaron Donald. He's no longer in the NFL. Yes. So the Rams have needs on that defensive line, and they are up next. I am leaving Newton up, but I am throwing up a an edge rusher, Jared Verse, uh, out of Florida State. Um, I think the Rams could go either interior or edge. They uh, obviously had a breakout year from Kobe Turner, Byron Young, but mm-hmm. this is really it's – a, it's a good draft for the Rams, by the way, because so many offensive guys are going early. Uh, they have their pick, I think, of two very good players. Two very good players. I know there's a need screaming to say, hey, let's take Johnny Newton and we can get our Aaron Donald. I'm not going to. 
I think Jared Verse is a guy that everybody's sleeping on because they're going to say he's a power player. Well, guess what? So was Cam Jordan. Look at him. He's having a Hall of Fame career. Jared Verse, uh, explosive. He ran 4-5, I believe. Uh, he can play with power. He's got enough athleticism, I think, to turn the corner. Um, I'm going to take Jared Verse. Like, the productivity is there from Albany to Florida State. Um, it didn't drop off. As a matter of fact, it only got better. So Jared Verse is going to be around. Yeah, I like Jared Verse a lot. Uh, you know who's going to be bummed, by the way, about these uh, pass rushers flying off is the Bucks because in the last draft, Verse dropped to Tampa, and I was like, ooh, wouldn't that be nice? But he, yeah. he, he, not, not going to happen this time around. Mm -hmm. The Steelers are back up. I think I'm presenting you two. Uh, this is a difficult decision. Terry and Arnold is back in the board. Corner, definitely a need. But Marius Mims, offensive tackle, also a need. What would you do? They love Georgia guys. Let's remember, they took Washington to tight end. They took Broderick Jones, uh, the offensive tackle. I think they take another Georgia guy on Amari's men because Mike Tomlin, Mike Tomlin made a quote to me years ago, and he said it before. And when, when projects come up or when guys who need some extra development come up, I'm always reminded of this. He says, when I hear people say a guy needs to get better at this, that means he needs to be coached. Well, guess what? That's my job. And I don't run from coaching. I run to coaching. And so I think that they love the Georgia products, the athletes. Uh, they're taking a couple of them. I think they would take Mims in, in a heartbeat. The Dolphins, who are paying next, are devastated mm -hmm. that you took Amarius Rams. <laughs> but there is still some good offensive linemen for them. Everybody assumes they're going to go offensive line. However, uh, the interior of the defensive line is a need as well. Yeah. Uh, you remember Christian Wilkins. He's gone. So I am putting Newton back up, and I am introducing Graham Barton. Uh, out of Duke, who would probably play for the interior in Miami. Ooh, I'm going to go with Graham Barton. Just, just too, it's, it's too much versatility. Uh, you're yeah. talking about a guy that, from an athletic standpoint. What was he? A, I think he was a quarterback at one point, tight end. Like, he's played all kinds of positions, super athletic, um, left tackle, center. Some people say he can't play left tackle. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to put him in left tackle until he shows me he can't. Then I'll put him somewhere else. But he gives you five position flexibility. And I think the Dolphins right now need that, especially after uh, losing some of the players that they've lost. The Eagles at 22 are thrilled because corner is their biggest need. And somehow, improbably, Terry and Arnold is still available. However, so is Cooper DeGene, who uh, just tested phenomenally yeah. at his pro day. Uh, quite athletic. Uh, and in some ways, you can see the fit with Vic Fangio. Would you go Arnold or DeGene? I would probably go Arnold, even though you said it right. Cooper DeGene tested phenomenally. I think he had 10-2 broad, 1-5, 10. Uh, what he ran, 4-4. Four, four. Just phenomenal numbers. Some people think he's a safety. Really Some good. people think he's a corner. Uh, he can, he's, he's got position flexibility. And, and something you're also going to hear with this new kickoff rule, I think he's going to be not just a punt returner. He's going to be a kick returner also. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, he's still available. We're leaving him up. Okay. So I have an, I think this is an interesting one. The Patriots are back. Do you remember they went uh, offensive line? First yep. pick. Not surprising. Mm -hmm. uh, they are back here at 23. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. So I'm going to put up two players we have not seen yet. Another offensive lineman because they honestly still need offensive linemen in New England. I'm putting up Tyler Guyton on the board. Uh, I am also putting up. Actually, you know what? I'm scratching that. Tyler Guyton doesn't make it. That doesn't make sense. They don't need. They don't need him that bad. Uh, I'm gonna put up. I'm gonna put up DeGene. I, I don't know. Just I just see it. However, I'm also gonna put up Ad Mitchell. Uh, they need desperately need playmaking. Is that too rich? It's whatever. That's the option. A.D. Mitchell, 23, New England, or are you taking Cooper DeGene? I'm going to go with Cooper DeGene just because New England, uh, I know it's a new it's a new day up there, but in that building, they like guys that are versatile, that can do a lot, and Cooper DeGene provides you flexibility because if you draft him at high, you can play him at corner, you can play him at safety. Like you, you, He's going to be a punt returner. He can be a playmaker in your defense, uh, and they've proven – like with guys like Kyle Duggar, they love guys that can do a lot of different things. And so I think he would fit well in that building up there.
Okay, Dallas at 24, both offensive linemen. I am putting up Guyton here, who's the tackle out of Oklahoma. And this is the first time we are seeing also Jackson Powers Johnson. Center is a need for this Dallas Cowboys offensive line. I think you say JPJ. Uh, the Cowboys need a center to snap to Dak for one year. Maybe if he's only going to be there, if they don't hurry up and pay him. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I think he adds a, just, just an element that the Cowboys need. Like, if I told you that the Cowboys... Like, give me one word to describe the Cowboys. Like, it, it wouldn't be nasty. Like, they, he, they're not that. And I think JPJ brings just a little bit of nastiness to that team. Yeah, that I, I, I like that reasoning a lot. And he is <laughs> nasty. Okay, so the Packers can go in a lot of directions at 25. They're kind of interesting. I took him off, but I'm going to put him back on. Because I do think, quietly, the interior of the defensive line, um, you know, uh, Kenny Clark's been holding it down by himself seemingly mm -hmm. forever. I know that they did draft Vonta Wyatt or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to put Newton back up because I think we're, we're starting to – suddenly it's really good value for him again. And then I am putting up an offensive lineman, uh, Tyler Guyton, again, uh, because that is – I think – I wouldn't be surprised if they go in that direction. Yeah, when best player available and need hit, um, like you heard can turn the card in, I think Tyler Guyton, especially with all the injury history they've had with Bakhtiari – um, and, and the Packers get more out of their offensive line. They coach them up better. If you just look at what they've done with the guys they've had, they've coached them up really well. Guyton needs some coaching. He's super athletic. Uh, he can, he's one of the tackles in this draft that can pull. Uh, his senior bowl was outstanding. I think the Packers take him, and they coach him up, and by the middle of the season, he's their starting left tackle. Okay, the Bucks are up. So the Bucks are bummed because the edge rushers that I mentioned are all off of the board. Uh, there is one edge rusher that I will add back. I also think that they could go corner. So I'm giving you your choice between Chop Robinson and Nate Wiggins out of Clemson, who has not showed up yet. Wow. Um, love the 4-2 from Nate Wiggins. Don't like the 178 or whatever he weighs. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just nothing. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take Chop Robinson. You know, the Bucks got rid of Shaq, Shaq Barrett. They've been waiting on uh, Joe Tryon, Sharenka, to take that next step. They drafted Yaya Diaby last year. He showed some flashes. But in this Todd Bowles defense, you got to get some guys coming off the edge. And they need a guy that's got juice. And Chop Robinson has that. His first step may be the best first step of any edge guy uh, in the entire draft. So. Chop Robinson to town. Okay. Arizona Cardinals, 27. The needs are everything. So nice. <laughs> I am uh, putting up Newton back on the board, and then uh, I'll put Wiggins on both areas of need. I'm going to find him. I think this is a spot where we could get Newton off the board, some interior pass rush. Yeah. I feel comfortable at, at this point in the draft. I, I do think he's going to be the second defensive tackle draft just because – uh, Murphy's a little bit more physical to me. And, and, and I think if you're Newton, you get to Arizona, um, they're going to need to get him some edge help. That way he wasn't get double teamed because he's going to need space. But I like the fit for him in Arizona. All right. We're approaching the end. People might roll their eyes at my selection for the Bills. But I really want to hear what you think. So AD Mitch, the so wide receiver is obviously you need. Yes. But what type of receiver? They have Khalil Shakir, who was actually a pretty good deep threat at the end of last season. And they have, uh, of course, Dalton Kincaid at tight end. Yeah. A.D. Mitchell is back. This might sound really early, but I'm putting up Lad McConkie. Just, I know they have Curtis Samuel, too. I just, just want to see what you think. It's only going to be a little early. I like, um, I love Lad McConkie. I think he's a top 40 player. So here's a here's kind of start where where the conversation starts. But AD Mitchell, I think you got to take him. Um, yeah. The speed, he catches everything, uh, and on top of that, they need a receiver. They need somebody with some juice. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna if you are if you're a Buffalo, like you run to the podium with this with this selection, and then you get on Twitter and say Bills Mafia, Stefan who? <laughs> I think that the Bills would be extremely, extremely happy if uh, if if that's how things shook out. This is now I'm going to get a little crazy for you. It's Detroit. You're picking mm -hmm. 29. You're kind of stacked. Corner is a need, however. Yeah. So I am bringing back Wiggins, a uh, guy who can play man coverage, which they play a fair amount of in Detroit. Or the Raiders are on the phone and they want to trade up for Michael Penix. Uh, so in the process, 
you would pick up, I don't know, like an additional second or third or whatever. The point is you're trading down, you're getting draft capital. Uh, would you take that trade if you're the Las Vegas Raiders? No doubt, because if, if they're trading up for a quarterback, the pot is going to be sweet. You take the trade. And Vegas trades up. Right. Vegas takes Michael Penix Jr., and if you're Detroit, now you can get back into round two and, and you can continue building your team. I tell you who fits in Detroit, and, and I know we're not going to get to him in this exercise. What about the guy Enos Rekestraw from Missouri? He fits in Detroit yeah. like a glove. So I, uh, he is one where I keep expecting him to go in the second round, but at, when I look at Detroit at the end there, I'm like, depending on how the corners – shake out I, yeah. I it, it's definitely an option it's definitely an option okay well the ravens biggest needs are offensive line corner we have taken so many offensive linemen it's kind of crazy but i am going to add another one uh i'm gonna add jordan morgan arizona or wiggins Clemson, corner. I think this is where Wiggins comes off. Um, you know, when, when you look at Baltimore, I mean, Humphrey, eh, and he's more of a slot guy now, hasn't really stayed healthy. They need another cover guy in Baltimore. Um, Wiggins, I think he fits that. He's really great in man coverage. Probably needs to get in the weight room and have a couple peanut butter sandwiches late at night to make sure he can gain some weight. But other than that, he, he can definitely cover. Okay. The Niners, I think, are probably going to go offensive line, so I'm putting Morgan back up at tackle. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to throw up a – you know what? Mm. I'm going to throw up another corner. Just I want to see what you think of him. I also think that they could draft a cornerback, maybe not in the first round, um, but sort of the second corner remains a little bit of a question mark. I'm putting up Kool-Aid McKinstry. Mm -hmm. uh, curious to see what you think. Love Kool-Aid, obviously. Um, got the, I think it was the, the fifth metal toss, so had to get fixed. The workout numbers were great, so he should be ready for training camp. Morgan is intriguing, though, because he's not quite two years off the ACL, athletic tackle. Uh, the 49ers usually don't invest high picks in the offensive line. Like, they think that they can put, get plug-and-play guys in yeah. there. Um, I agree. I would take Morgan here just because I think the athleticism fits the scheme that Kyle wants to run. And they got to get younger. You like you, Trent. It's getting a lot of like the gorilla is getting older, as they call him. Like they got to make sure that they get some younger guys. Yeah, it's um, it's quietly a problem the offensive line in San Francisco. You know, outside it, it, of it, it's Trent. been a problem since since McGlinchey started going downhill, and then they let him go, and then they just thought they could plug and play. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to throw in another receiver for you. So the Chiefs are 32. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put up Ray Straw because you said you liked him. And corner is quite obviously in need. And they need a corner who can press and, you know, all the uh, – well, I mean, the, obviously a huge issue with LeJarius Sneed gone. Uh, but wide receiver is, of course, an ongoing uh, question there. And I am going to put Lad back up. Hmm. Uh, you know what? No, actually, I'll do a different receiver just to make things interesting and see what you think. I am going to put up. Let's see what you think. I know. This, this I know who you're going to put up. I know exactly who you're going to put up. Do you? I don't know. <laughs> no, that was. I, I. I thought you was going to get try to rekindle the Franklin? magic. Uh, worthy. I thought you were going to put worthy up. Oh. Uh, I don't know. He's so small. Yeah, everybody says it, but he he is he is small, but he's going in the first round. I just don't know where. But in this, well, for this, I, for I this, put up Keon Coleman. Yeah, yeah, for this exercise, uh, I'm going to take the corner just because I think that obviously it's a need. They lose Snead. And, you know, talking to Blake Baker, who's a defensive coordinator from Missouri, he said, rarely ever have you seen a corner set the tone for your defense or set the tone for the team. And he does that. And so I think it, it, it'd it be amazing. Like his attitude is infectious, which is why I thought he would fit in Detroit, but he definitely fits in Kansas City. We do a bonus pick for the Panthers because I feel bad for their fans. Uh, <laughs> and they don't have a first round pick. Uh, and I, I, I think also it's a fun pick because they're going to have a choice of a lot of really cool receivers. Yeah. Uh, and I think pretty much everyone expects them to do that. So uh, let's put up, I'm going to, oh, yeah, sorry, I meant to put up. 
I gave them I've given them Lad a bunch, and I think honestly that would be a really good pick for them. But I'm mm-hmm. going to put up Worthy and Franklin because I want to hear what you what you have to say. Who are you? You, you want to add speed? All right. Well, here's two incredibly fast guys. Yeah, I'm going to take Xavier Worthy. I, I just think the, the traits are there, the speed. Wow. Um, I'm going to open the field up because now I'm going to allow defenses or make defenses back up a little bit and hope to give my young quarterbacks some room to throw the football because he's 5'10". I need him to, to see the lanes. I need him to see the voids in the zone. Uh, so I'm going to go Xavier Worthy. Well, they're the same size, so. Yeah. One's faster. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Booger, this is amazing. Uh, I give you A plus for your draft. Uh, Thank this you. is really fun. Uh, I can't wait to see you uh, on our main draft coverage. See you in Detroit. I'll be there too. We're doing NFL Live there. Yeah. Uh, but I really appreciate you coming on. This was really fun. I'm looking forward to it, Mina. Thanks for having me. Tell Lenny I said hello. <laughs>